Hey folks, and welcome to TK Power Sports. Sitting next to me today is the Polaris Ranger XP1000. This is the best selling utility side by side on the market. And in this video, we're gonna tow trailers, do some work with it, go on a trail ride and try to find out why. Powering the Ranger XP1000 is a 999cc liquid-cooled four-stroke twin-cylinder engine that puts out 82 horsepower, and that power is sent through a CVT. Now, the overall dimensions on this unit come in at 62 and a half inches wide, 81 inches long, and 77 inches tall, while it offers 13 inches of ground clearance. The tires on this unit are a set of 27 inch pro armors and those things are eight ply tires so they should last a little bit longer that's usually what you want on a utility unit now i told you the overall size of the machine but what's most important here is how big is the bed so talking about dimensions this bed is 36 inches long 54 inches wide and about 12 and a half inches tall and i will show you it has a typical sort of truck style tailgate on it and then you get actual little tie downs, D-rings in each one of the corners. I appreciate those. Plus all these stake hole pockets so you could put in different things up into here and then tie them down. A lot of different uses on the bed. And then what I also like is it is a dump bed and you only need to be at one side of the bed to dump it. Some brands you still have to go to both sides but here one handle here and it dumps and it's a pretty serious gas assist shock under there. So I don't know how much it'll lift, but if you had a big load in here, it's definitely going to help you. Bed capacity here comes in at 1,000 pounds, and there is a full two inch hitch receiver down there, and you can put 2,500 pounds behind this Ranger, and we are gonna tow a trailer later in this video, so make sure you stay tuned. Another important aspect of a side-by-side, -side, I really feel now more than ever, is how easy it is to accessorize. So let me show you here on the Ranger. We pop these little clips, the hood comes off like so, revealing all of this stuff. So a lot of useful things here. You have coolant reservoir there and the top to your rad right there. These are your air breathers. So basically, you know, you can't get water over your hood. You've gone too deep. These are your main breathers. And then over here, these are your power hookups. If you want to put in a light bar or a winch or any other accessory, you're going to hook it right into there. Once again, it's super nice to have everything pre-wired, ready to go. So then when you do go to the aftermarket or to the Polaris accessory catalog, it's basically plug and play. Let's look inside the Ranger now. So we get these nets for doors. It's just a plastic clip up here. Though I do have to comment on our unit. This plastic clip is really cheap. It's not doing a great job at even plugging in. And then it won't hold this strap tight at all. It's been a little bit annoying. So uh, we take the nets off. I don't mind the nets besides the fact they're not working great. I don't mind them at all. So let me sit in here. First of all, I stand at six foot two. I have tons of space, tons of headroom, even when I have my helmet on. So that hasn't been an issue. It's a mostly upright seating position but I do have decent bolsters here in the seats which actually kind of hold on to me a bit so when you're hustling it down the trail it's not too uncomfortable. Um, let's talk about the storage now and I do have to say I think Polaris uh, does this better than most brands because there's just every inch of this dashboard is utilized for some type of storage. Starting on my far right cup holders a lower cup holder almost there for like a water bottle something like that and then I love this one look how deep this is you can fit a ton of stuff down in there and that stuff will mostly be protected from the elements as well double glove box setup so you got the one on the top and then the one lower and again these lower glove boxes really deep that's half my arm in there so you're gonna bring a lot of stuff along with you little cutouts in the dash these are good for just little stuff you're always tossing in there whether it's nuts and bolts on a job a couple more cup holders over here and then right in front of me little storage bin deep storage bin another kind of water bottle bin over here on my left another cup holder two cup holders down here and then while I'm going on this I might as well show you guys as well this seat flips up and what 
Polaris does down there, they put a ring in the floor for a bucket. So if you happen to have a lot of buckets you're moving, you can actually put it down there and it will be held onto a little bit. And then over here under the driver's seat, more storage, not a ton, but just a little bin. So again, I, I really applaud Polaris because every single spot on this unit, there could be storage, there basically is. One last thing on driver comfort, adjustability. Steering wheel is adjustable up and down quite a bit too. Look how low that goes and look how high that goes. When it's up high like this, it makes you feel like a bus driver, a city bus driver. And then my seat here, also adjustable by, I don't know, four to six inches. So if you've got short legs and you have trouble reaching the pedals, you can really move yourself up nice and close. So again, appreciate that this unit feels like it's built for many different sizes of riders. Let's take a look underneath the Ranger now. So first things first, you get this big beefy bumper, this nice bar up here. This is winch ready, so you can fit a winch right through. And down here, this low point on this bar, I think that's a pretty nice recovery point right there as well if you needed kind of a low point to grab. Now as we roll back, you get this very first skid plate here for the front differential. That is steel, this is my magnet, that's how I check. But then right here at the midpoint, this, is all plastic or some type of uh, polymer or polycarbonate plastic. And it goes all the way back to the back and at the tail end, you get another piece of steel. So this is an interesting philosophy. Right up front, I think you always that want that plate to be the strongest, so you have steel. In the middle, if you're already up on the obstacle, generally here you're just dragging your belly, and in a lot of ways, plastic is better at sliding on things than steel is, so I like that it's plastic. And then same thing at the rear end, sometimes you come down hard on your tail, so they made it a little stronger back there as well. So every brand has a different philosophy when it comes to skid plates, and uh, I think Polaris has it pretty much right on. All right, folks, time for the trail ride. So first things first, performance mode, two-wheel drive. Let's feel the power. <laughs> and it's good. It is, it is more power than most utility side-by-sides honestly probably need. But I do have to tell you, um, recently I was in the Kawasaki Mule, the new Kawasaki Mule 1000, and that thing feels truly utility focused. Jumping out of something like that and getting into this Polaris, I know this is a utility machine, but it almost feels like a rec ute, like a recreation utility cross. And that's one of the reasons. You have performance mode, and when you put your foot into it, it takes off. More so than that, we got a bunch of nice sharp corners here on the property. It's easy to hang the back end out and steer with your right foot and really uh, yeah, rotate around the corners, which isn't necessarily something you expect from a utility work focused side by side, but the Ranger absolutely plays in both of those worlds. Now it's a little more work focused and fun focused, but I've been having a blast today. And that's also because of 11 inches of suspension travel. That's a pretty legitimate amount of travel for, uh, yeah, for coming out here and eating up all these whoops and bumps and rocks. So on the fun side of all of the straight utility side-by-sides, including the, you know, Can-Am Commander, um, or the Can-Am Defender, I should say, I think that the Ranger here probably has the distinction of being the most fun utility side-by-side -side on the market. Even the seating position, it's fairly vertical, but my back is just leaned back a little bit, and I have that nice bolstering in the seat. Um, seat bolsters are usually reserved for fun machines, machines that are going to shake you all over the place. So I think Polaris kind of nodded to those folks who want a, a rig that's going to work hard for them, but you could still take it out on a Sunday to a trail ride and, uh, you know, not find its limit that quickly and still have a blast and be comfortable. The other thing I want to mention, the power steering, um, it's on the lighter side, very common for utility machines. Generally, these are being used at slow speeds in tight to maneuver places, and that's when you want the light power steering. When you're flying at speed, I would prefer the steering to have a little bit more weight in my hands, but you have to realize, yeah, this, this is more designed for work. So in that vein, the power steering is okay. There's just enough feedback that even when you're flying along, uh, it feels pretty, pretty secure, pretty safe. 
Now, if I have to complain about one thing, it is a bit of fit and finish stuff. I mentioned earlier this plastic clip down here and this strap, which is coming loose. Uh, and then the shifter, and I, and I hate to say this is probably a little common on Polaris models, but I've had a couple different Polarises that were like this. The shifter is very undefined. It can be a little tough to know what gear you're in just by feel. And then sometimes the screen tells me I'm in reverse and I hit the throttle and it just skips and skips and skips and sometimes it jumps up into neutral. Um, so yeah, I just, the shifter has not treated us that well. I feel like it's a little rough on the transmission and I haven't had reliability problems. I know Polaris doesn't have the best reputation for reliability. It's ran fine, but something like that kind of suggests to me that over time, yeah, you could have a reliability issue because it just doesn't work quite the way it should. And this unit is basically brand new. One other thing I really appreciate here on the Ranger is turf mode. That is essentially an unlocked rear differential, so all the power goes to one tire. Now, what good is that? Turning radius. If you want to turn super sharp, turf mode allows you to do that. Uh, I have a shot here. I was back picking up that wood. I had to turn around on the trail in the bush. I put it in turf mode, and I was able to do it. Plus, as the name suggests, if you have grass or ground you want to protect, you don't want to tear it up doing sharp turns, put it in turf mode, and that's exactly what that does. Two last thoughts while I'm here on the trail. I do still have this little LCD screen in front of me. It's certainly not high tech looking, but it's very clear, very sharp, easy to run through all the different settings and easy to just look down at a glance and get the info. And I actually appreciate that they kept a hard tachometer and speedometer as well for that exact reason. Sometimes you just want to look real quick. And so you can kind of see where that needle is really fast. So you have a mix here. I like all the information that it's uh, presenting to me. So, I already said it guys, if you want to have fun, but you want a straight utility side by side, the Ranger is probably your choice. But how does this thing actually handle when it's being put to work? Well, you know here on TK Power Sports, we always like to load them up with payload and trailers. So why don't we go do that right now? A lot of people, they need usage like this because I'm just going down the road barely one mile to the boat launch. And the boat launch that we're gonna use, it's really rough, it's gravel, it's not that even. So it's not great if you're trying to use even an all-wheel drive crossover. So for us, a side-by-side -side is the ideal vehicle for launching boats or PWCs. Now, you wouldn't wanna to go too heavy, but yeah, I'm not too worried. And I think the story is told too by cruising down the road. It, it feels fine. My nose feels high, the steering feels a bit light, definitely the rear end is squatting because of all that weight, but it's pulling it fine, low range didn't struggle, I'm doing 15 miles per hour, and again, I take my hands off the wheel, it's going straight, the Ranger's handling it, I wouldn't recommend this for long distances, but yeah, if you're moving something around a parking lot, taking your boat down the road, this thing will do it no problem, and uh, next we'll just have to see how it handles that gravel launch, let's, uh, let's get down there and find out. And now the fun begins. We're backing down the boat launch. Now, as I mentioned, this is just a gravel launch and it's a little rough at the bottom. So uh, it's, it's nice to have four wheel drive and it's nice to have a vehicle with some clearance. And the other thing it tests is the brakes because once you're on the hill, I'm basically just going to use the brakes and the weight of the machine to hold the wave runners back. This is not specific to the Ranger, but I just want to point out as compared to a pickup truck, because we're always backing these things in with trucks too, PWCs, they turn so much tighter, so the trailer reacts so much quicker. Um, it's almost harder in reverse because it reacts quicker, but at the same time, I can cut the, the turn sharper and I can just uh, maneuver it a little bit easier with the, the side by side as compared to a truck. And the visibility compared to a truck is just awesome too. I mean, there's nothing around me, no glass or anything. So I can just look straight back and see my trailer and the units. If I was in a pickup truck, I'd only be able to see the top of those handlebars. I wouldn't actually be able to see down to the ground like I can here. So I'm purely on the brakes now. This is just the brakes and the weight of the unit holding them back. And so far, so good. It's another thing, the brakes are important, but you also want a unit that's a little bigger, a little heavier, so it'll counterbalance. 
and we're coming into the rougher spot. I'm guessing I'll probably get a bit of tire slip, but we'll find out. This is also when, frankly, the lighter steering makes it a little sketchier because my nose is a little tall. But kudos to the Ranger. So far, so good. Someone's graded this launch and added gravel since I was here last. It's actually better than it used to be. I was expecting worse. But uh, yeah, thank you, random stranger, for fixing up our boat launch. But there we go, look at that, all the way down, no problem at all, didn't even slip, the brakes were enough, the front, or the light front end didn't matter. Yeah, I would say, uh, again, overloaded or not, this is a perfect match for this unit. If this is something you're gonna be doing every week, because a lot of people pull their wave runners out all the time, this thing would serve you perfectly. top speed run here on the Ranger XP 1000 got it in high range uh, two-wheel drive performance mode let's see what it can do and taking off in three two one I think I saw 58 miles per hour in just for a second. Maybe if I had a little more runway, maybe I could have got to 60, but it really felt like it was basically tapped out right around 58 miles per hour. And yeah, folks, now we've towed that trailer, but I have more wood back out here on this trail that I got to haul out. So I'm gonna load up the bed and we'll see how it does with the bed load of wood. Now, one thing I want to comment on right now, actually, is the fact that this Polaris only has park in the transmission. It doesn't have a traditional parking brake. And I bring that up because when you're stopped on a hill, even a little incline like this, and I'm about to put a bunch of weight in the back, when you're shifting out of park, you can really get a big kind of bang because all that weight is on that parking pin. So I'm just a little surprised, I guess, that they don't keep the parking brake along with park in the transmission because there's some times where, yeah, I'd much rather just use the parking brake to keep all of this weight off of my transmission, but Polaris doesn't have that. <laughs> all the lengths left back here are all really long because every time I come, I just pick up the short, easy ones. So now all I have left is massive hard locks. <laughs> These things are, they're heavy, man. They're good 70, 80 pounds each, I'd say. Nice. That seems okay. Now the tailgate here, I don't know if this is an official rating. These wires seem all right. I'd be almost a little more worried about the plastic buckling before these were to give out, but feels all right. We're gonna leave it like that and we'll see what happens. Guys, we talk about real world a lot, but this is real world. I don't know how much this weighs. When you're back here doing a job working, I'm not bringing scales with me to try to figure out if I'm overloaded. I'm gonna load as much as I can fit because that just makes sense when you're working. And my point there is, you know, the ratings matter, but at the same time, I just wanna see how this thing works. Absolutely fully loaded, even overloaded, because I know it's going to be overloaded when a farmer or a rancher or a logger, get a hold of it. Okay, I think that's just about good. Sadly, I am limited sort of by the size of the bed and all our long lengths of wood there, but I fit quite a bit in there. And now we'll drive it and we'll see how it feels.
quite a bit of weight back there. You can really feel the, the, the rear end is squatting. My nose is a little uh, high, a little off the ground. But let me say, first of all, the power is no issue whatsoever. This 999cc, loads of power. Again, I'm in low range and work mode. And the key with both of those things combined is slow speed control. It's really easy for me to modulate the throttle. It's not jumpy at all. And if I was to put it in, say, performance mode, that's the opposite. That's a super touchy throttle. And if I was to do that and take off, I'm going to lose my load out of the back. So it's it, this sort of situation is exactly why you want that work mode just to change up your throttle response. And then yeah, put it in low range and look, we can creep along here at four miles per hour. But if I did want to pick up the speed, I'd have no problem there too. Now, when it comes to the suspension, it's definitely being worked. It's feeling like I'm kind of halfway through the travel, but I don't feel like I'm that close to the bump stops yet either. Um, and that's just a, a function of how much suspension travel is here. 11 inches of travel means that I have quite a bit to work with. So it feels, yeah, a little floaty, I guess, a little imprecise, but I think that's what you'd expect. More importantly though, it doesn't feel like I'm right at the bump stops or like I'm kind of max, have a max load on. It's, it's handling the load just fine. And here we are at our wood pile. We've been dragging all this extra wood here for a little while now. We'll cut it up before the winter to have some stuff for burn. Some of it inside, some of it just for firewood outside. Uh, and now we're going to dump this bed. And this is what I was talking about earlier with that gas assist shock. This is when it matters because this is a heavy load. So I'm going to see how easy this is for me to do by myself. Let's see. Oh really easy man give credit to that shock honestly that was quite a bit of weight and that was no problem at all for me to get to now i will I say at this point there are other utility side by sides with longer beds on the market the kawasaki mule for instance offers a larger bed the can am defender also offers a larger bed and i point that out because in this instance it would have been nice to have a little bit more length for my long lengths of wood here However, we did make it work, and then you got this one that got jammed in. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. There we go. But this is actually another benefit of having the plastic bed. When I first saw beds like this, I was leery. I kind of figured steel was better. You always want metal. But honestly, this is not a big deal. If you scrape it, even if you gash into it, you're just gonna reveal more plastic. It's not like you're gonna reveal bare metal, which is then gonna rust. Also, you saw that piece that got jammed in there. The bed's got a little bit of give to it. So I was able to just kind of reef it out of there. So. The, the, the steel beds that are out there, they're probably a little bit more durable in the short term, but in the long term, I honestly think plastic is probably the way to go. A lifetime of beating, this is gonna look better than a steel bed would. Well folks, we're coming to the end of this video. So now you need to know what does it cost? Well, if you go for this, this is the XP1000 Premium, you're gonna be paying $26,300 here in Canada. So it won't come cheap, but like I said earlier, this has to be one of the most fun utility machines on the market. So you're spending a bunch of money, but you're also getting a machine that you can work with and then you can have fun with. And as long as the reliability holds up, I absolutely would recommend and this machine all day long, especially, like I said, if you're using it for both work and play. So that's it for this one. Now, of course, I need to hear from you. Go in the comments. Let me know what you think of this Ranger XP1000 and all of our testing, of course. And then uh, please go below, hit like, hit subscribe, hit join, become a member of our channel, and then come right back here to TK Power Sports to see what we're testing next. And if you'll excuse me, I got a lot more riding to do both on my Ranger and on those Wave Runners. So I'll see you later.